Hey guys, how's it going? Kapan here. So, uh, yeah, they released the rest of the TGT cards, to my surprise. Um, thought the game's coming out on the 24th based on the Windows clock action, but maybe not. Maybe it's coming up a little bit sooner, but regardless... I got a pretty cool review for you guys. I ended up doing it live on stream. Um, I didn't talk about a lot of things, mostly in terms of what's possible with decks, card interactions, uh, a few other side topics, maybe big implications in Arena. And, you know, this will happen in other videos. This is basically going to be, you know, a pretty short. It's going to be a measly uh, couple hours of card review. So, enjoy! Dreadsteed! Warlock card, 4 mana 1-1, one, one. the Death Rattle summons Dreadsteed, which is this card. So you get, you literally get infinite value. First time ever in Hearthstone where a card by itself promises the options to bring you infinite value. Um, it seems kind of bad because on turn 4 you usually want to do more than play a 1-1, one, one. Uh, but it's a demon. So you can use some of the demon buff cards somewhat reliably, but of course whenever this gets silenced it's totally sad news for you. Um, it doesn't seem like it'll see much play just as it is because it's too strong, uh, too too weak of a presence in like the tempo game. But uh, well, it's it's pretty good, kind of, in like very 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 niche scenarios. Uh, I don't know. It's a really cool card. Um, it probably would be OP if it cost three mana. But judging by how many people actually play Silence, probably not. So, uh, I don't know. I'll certainly have a lot of fun with this card, but um, seems a little bit too weak for Arena. Seems a little bit too weak for Constructed in the general sense. Cut first. Uh, Rogue card, 2 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever this minion attacks a hero, add a coin to your hand. Um, I cheated a little bit on this one, I'll be honest with you guys. I saw, I think it was Trump's card review, he mentioned how um, the coin has about the value of two damage. I don't know how you come up with that. Um, and by his standard, this card essentially has Wind Fury. So it's like a two mana, two, two Wind Fury. And that was apparently pretty mediocre. And I'd say it's actually crap um, because the, I mean, Shamans have a two mana, three, two Wind Fury. And it's a mech. And the fact that it's a mech is actually a pretty relevant part of that creature, because if it wasn't a mech, it might not even see play. So this card is, like, pretty bad. Um, its effect is maybe more tailored towards the rogue rather than a shaman. I suppose there's that advantage, because the rogue has a lot of, like, spell dominance and that kind of stuff, a lot of synergy with that. You kind of want to tempo your opponents, and if you get extra coins for funsies, well, you might do a good job of tempoing your opponents. It seems like an extremely vulnerable creature, but... Rogues have cards that, you know, deal with your opponent's small creatures very effectively. So maybe you can get a bunch of attacks in. Um, and it's probably just like a pretty fun card. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't really seem like it'll see too much play. You have to kind of keep in mind, like, you know, you're against the Rogue, right? So, like, the Rogue plays this. Like, do, you, do you actually care? Like, you might take, like, two damage or something. And uh, also, as you guys will see, a lot of the cards kind of promote the control aspect of the game. And most control decks, most mid-range decks, either run um, early game removal or early game weapons. And actually, you're really few early game creatures. So, like, this guy is going to have kind of some trouble to you know, tackle the aggressive decks, because, like, an aggressive deck uh, might just have, like, a bunch of one-drops or really sticky two- and three-drops, but if you have a good hand, you can maybe protect it against aggressive decks, but I think against matches where it actually might matter, like, against mid-range and control matches, this guy's probably going to die if they feel they're threatened, but I still don't feel, like, if I see this on the other side of the board, I don't think I'd feel very threatened, so I wouldn't even really care. Ice Howl! This is uh, one of my favorite cards. This is one of my favorite dudes in World of Warcraft. Uh, just just before we go into the card, Ice Hal in World of Warcraft was a beast. We have confirmation from even from one of my very earliest YouTube videos. Of course, I played World of Warcraft for quite some time. Um, so uh, as it so happens, uh, I raised the issue and Ben Brode challenged me, and I. I I submitted to Ben Brode because, you know, Ben Brode is the master of everything. Um, but then upon further research, uh, we learned that there was some proof of it being a beast, especially when I played World of Warcraft. But it seems that since then, it has been changed, so it is no longer a beast. Um, this is like a Yeti thing, 
a Sasquatch or some, I don't know, some shit like that. And this basically qualifies it closer to a humanoid. So they made that change in World of Warcraft. And because of that, Ice Hell is not a beast, which makes the card completely unplayable. Well, not really. But um, it's a cool card, actually. Um, in World of Warcraft, he had a phase where you couldn't really touch him. And then he just charges at someone. And if they don't move out of the way, they get absolutely destroyed. Um, so it actually uh, resembles that pretty well. Um, you can't really stop its initial attack. Uh, if it hits something, that something is going to die. Um, but it can't attack heroes, so that part is a little bit weak. But it, it can kind of work in some ways. Um, because, like, the charge effect, you can't really play much more than 9 mana worth of card on that turn. So when you're going to play this guy, you're basically just going to play this guy. Um, and you're going to use him to remove one of your opponent's creatures. Uh, you know, some, some classes kind of struggle with hard removal like maybe Druid, so maybe they'll maybe, maybe very optimistically play this card uh, because you can remove something and then this card is, is, is still there on the board and sometimes your opponents might be like, oh, this can't attack me, I'm not really playing any big creatures so I'm not going to bother using my removal on an injured Ice Howl. But then, after the first creature attack, especially classes like Druids, they always have Silence in their deck. So if you silence him after the first attack, yes, he loses charge. So you don't want to silence him um, on the turn that you play him, uh, which is pretty hard to do. But uh, yeah, after the turn you play him, if he's still alive, you can silence him. And you can clock your opponent in the face for 10. So that's, that's okay. It's, it's okay. And actually, if he was a beast, he might maybe make it into a druid list. But still, it, it just seems it seems a bit too crappy. It seems a bit too clunky. Um, but I don't know. I'd really like to see this guy get some play. I just kind of have my doubts. Then we have uh, Healing Wave. This card has been all the rage since uh, it was announced like uh, earlier this week. It's a 3-mana Shaman card. Restore 7 health. Re reveal a minion in each deck. And if yours costs more, restore 14 health instead. Uh, again, it's the Jousting mechanic. And as a little bit of a review, uh, the Jousting mechanic um, is not that likely to trigger. Uh, because in the event of a tie, uh, nothing happens. You have to win the Joust to get the effect. So um, if you're playing a slow deck and the meta is like mid-range then it's probably like a 50-50. It's, it's really skewed if everyone's playing like aggressive decks, uh, and if you're playing mid-range or a slow deck, then you might win like, you know, 80, maybe even 100% in some situations. Like some hunter lists, they have like, you know, they max out at like a three mana cost creature. So uh, you could actually have a scenario where if you have a shaman deck, you only have early game removal and weapons, and your creatures start at like three or four mana. So you might actually have a 100% chance to win a just in some situations. Uh, the reason this card is really powerful is it meets the criteria. If you lose the joust, is it terrible? Um, not really. Um, it's still basically a healing touch, which has seen some play, even in like ramp druid. Some people used to use the card. Um, that kind of went away once Antique Healbot came into the picture, but uh, still it was pretty good. A lot of shamans have to use Antique Healbot, but shamans really struggle to catch up on the board in a big way, and a lot of shamans struggle with tempo. Um, so the Antique Healbot is really slow, it's really clunky, and this card will basically replace Antique Healbot, and I think will make the shaman list uh, a lot more viable in the control sense. Also, uh, Shaman decks uh, a lot of time lose to the really fast decks, and this this card works really well. Like if you're playing a slow deck and you're playing against like a face hunter, this card will will trigger the joust almost every single time. And 14 health is is literally game winning in a lot of those situations. Like um, you know when you're playing against the face hunter and you're like like I played Mildred against the face hunter, right? Um, whenever you tree of life for like you know even even like 16, 17, 18 health, they just concede. So 14 is pretty close to that, and you're going to do much more than just the Tree of Life on the turn that you play this card. Lance Carrier, uh, 2 mana, 1, 2 battle card, give it a friendly minion, plus 2 attack. This compares to Abusive Sergeant. Uh, Abusive Sergeant is a 1 mana. The difference between 1 and 2 mana is a really big difference, by the way. Um, Abusive Sergeant is a 2, 1 which in my opinion is better stats than 1, 2. 1, 2 is more like sticky stats, uh, but uh, Abusive is much more aggressive stats, 
and minions that buff other minions, you generally play that stuff in aggressive decks or zoo decks. So it kind of fits that type of deck to play a 2-1 minion rather than a 1-2 minion, so the stats are better on the abusive. But the advantage of the Lance Carrier is that the attack is permanent. So Lance Carrier is kind of like you play this in a mid-rangey or control type of deck to give something attack, and hopefully it will attack again on the following turn. And if it doesn't, then this card sucks. And I'd say because um, Constructed is such a refined format, if something is dangerous enough, and if you buff it by two attack, it it's probably dangerous enough. It probably will not get that second attack. Um, so it seems it just seems almost strictly worse than Abusive Sergeant. Uh, so I don't think anyone will play this card at all. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you play this and Abusive Sergeant. Maybe uh, in terms of arena. Uh, it might see some play, but uh, there's a lot of cards, a lot of cards that are better than this. Light's Champion, 3 mana, 4, 3 with the Battle Card of Silence, a Demon. Well, if you compare this to uh, Spellbreaker, which is a 4 mana, 4, 3 with just Silence, um, it's strictly better if you're going to target a Demon. Um, hmm, yeah. Well, you don't really encounter that many Demons. Um, I actually thought about what decks uh, might work that, you know, really, really seem pretty obvious like they might work. Uh, and Zoo is one of them. Warlock Zoo does seem like it would improve from TGT. TGT hasn't really introduced much in the way of, like, good board clears, removal, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we got some pretty good taunt creatures. Yeah, I got some life gain. But Zoo usually doesn't give a shit about you gaining life because they just build a board you can't really deal with so yeah you like you talk about like gaining life on shaman you might gain life whatever but like the next turn you're still going to take like 14 more damage so that part doesn't matter so you know maybe there'll be some some demon zoo dominance and maybe that will have this guy see some play but otherwise likely not uh four three stats against that type of deck is worse than uh three four stats in the general sense but if you want to deliberately smash the crap out of an imp gang boss this guy is your man because he's going to kill it in one hit survive and silence it so no dimps uh, uh no imps pop out yeah it's all right in arena um it seems pretty mediocre but uh, mediocre is usually fair enough. Uh, it doesn't saturate the pool. It doesn't make drafting arena any harder. Got some legendary action. Mage, legendary, Ronin, 8 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. And when he, when he dies, when he dies, death rattle, you get three arcane missiles. Um, so when I first looked at this card, not even when I first looked at it. When I first looked at it and thought about it for a while, I thought this card kind of sucked. Because he has to die for the arcane missiles to even pop up, and three arcane missiles is pretty good. Um, uh, the 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 comparison is to Avenging Wrath. Avenging Wrath is eight damage for uh, six mana. This is nine random damage for three mana. So you get like a super discounted Avenging Wrath, and Avenging Wrath is almost a good enough card. Um, yeah, it's all right. Um, after I kind of looked at the card i saw this card see play on the blizzard stream earlier today and the reality is that th it, it's okay that it's a death rattle because um you can't ignore a seven seven like if they play a seven seven um you can't just be like yeah whatever i'll just leave it on the board most of the time you have to deal with it if you deal with it they get the bonus unless uh unless maybe shaman is the biggest thing out there shaman has a lot of silences and hex so it kind of depends on the meta. Um, also, it seems like it won't fit into that many mage decks. But, you know, I have some more appreciation for this card. It seems like it's good enough. You know, it's not it's not like overpowered, but it's like pretty good. Uh, and if it's pretty good, uh, there's often like some kind of deck that pops up that really makes use of some, you know, just above average cards, which I think this is. Um, for Arena, this card seems pretty damn insane uh it's a big body uh it's just like big enough it tackles all the other big guys and you get three arcane missiles at the end which is often at least going to qualify as another card at maybe even two c reaver um boulder fist ogre stats boulder fist ogre mana cost when you draw this deal one damage to your minions your opponents are going to know that you have this card 
They might laugh at you because you have this card. Um, I mean, a lot of the warrior decks these days, they have this mechanic of dealing damage to your own minions, as you guys may already know. Um, whether this will continue, I don't know. Um, not much that I've seen or really thought about in TGT really uh, encourages this mechanic any further than it already has in the game. Like, they haven't, they haven't made Frothing Berserker 2.0, from, from my knowledge. So, um, with the existing card pool, it seems like this is just not good enough. Uh, but maybe, if you keep adding cards that trigger off of damage taken, maybe sometime down the road, maybe like years down the road, um, this card will be like useful again. Um, it just seems a little bit lackluster. Varian Rin, Warrior Legendary, 10 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, Battle Cry, draw 3 cards, put any minions you drew directly into the battlefield. Uh, this card is, like, really insane. Um, you know, Warrior, even when it's been, like, a really aggressive uh, field and constructed, uh, Control Warrior has still survived in some degree, and it's always been able to, like, fit in one or two minions that just kind of suck, but it's still fine to put them in. Um, so they've, they've always had space for, like, very niche minions, even when it's been really aggressive, and it seems like almost all the cards in TGT kind of promote a slow or mid-range type of deck, um, and, you know, maybe the meta will slow down a little bit. I think it will slow down at least a little bit, so that will allow even more flexibility for the Control Warrior, and with, uh, even, even a moderate amount of flexibility, this card is, like, uh, bat, bat shit OP. Um, so even if you just draw three cards, that's just, like, pretty good. Uh, it's, like, really, really, really slow, because it's 10 mana to draw three cards. But it's still okay. It's still, like, pretty good card. Uh, if you hit, like, any one minion, um, uh, it's fine. There are some minions you wouldn't want to hit. Like, if you get this guy, and you draw two cards, and you put a Cruel Taskmaster into play, then that's, that's just worse than, than drawing three cards. So, you know, again, it has to do a little bit with the deck. Uh, I think in, in almost all cases, it's, it's good enough to use. Um, but in some decks, it's going to be just crazy OP. You know, if you can uh, not have to, you know, play these early minions, that kind of stuff, because the game slowed down a little bit, you can run more mid-range minions, you can run more legendaries, perhaps, and with enough, the average result of this would be just totally crazy. Like, you know, if you play Varian, and then you get, like, I don't know, like a, a Belcher, whatever. It's, it's not even that big of a minion, you draw two spells. You know, that's just crazy, right? Because um, you, you, get, you get a Belcher, which is like five mana, and then you get a 7-7, seven, seven, and you drew two other cards. Um, so... This is a really, really, really powerful card. Um, if Warrior, uh, if Control Warrior is like dominant again, this might be like uh, just auto include. This might be a card you'll have to get used to playing against. All right. Uh, Arcane Blast. This was uh, released today. Uh, one mana mage spell. Epic. I don't know why it's epic. They probably just want to uh, drain my pool of dust very sadly. Deal 2 damage to a minion, so minion only. Uh, this spell gets double uh, bonus from spell damage. Uh, spell damage decks are not really a thing, and the ones that are a thing usually have to do with killing your opponent, mostly. Um, so, it's a really cool card. Um, I like it. Um, it's probably pretty decent. It's probably pretty decent in Arena, just you can kill stuff, I guess. Um, it doesn't seem like it does that much work for a card, so, meh, really. But, um, any low-cost spell in a mage deck is probably going to see some, some play in, like, again, the niche decks. I don't really see this being played in, like, the tempo mage right now, but, you know, maybe. Just low-cost cards in general see some play sometime in Hearthstone, so, yeah. Seems bad, but I think it'll find a spot sometime. Bear Trap. Um, two mana, of course. Secret for Hunter. Uh, after your hero is attacked, summon a 3-3 bear with taunt. Uh, from the stream, I saw that it actually summons an Iron for a Grizzly, um, which is uh, a beast that is maybe relevant. So you basically get a 3-3 taunt for two mana with a trigger. 
which seems pretty good on its own, but because it's a secret, you can get, get it out really quick with like Mad Scientist. Um, it just seems pretty cool. Uh, some of the interactions are really weird where um, it'll be like maybe pretty tricky to play around. Um, often when you play against the hunter, you attack with your garbage minion first because you don't know if it's a freeze trap. And if he has no board, you really have no way of knowing. So if you attack with your small minion first, it's not freeze trap, it's bear trap. You do like one damage to the hunter, and then your second creature is like a big creature. Well, the bear with taunt might prevent the big creature from doing damage. Um, so, I mean, it seems really cool. It seems like um, it's a fairly effective card, and traps in general, if they're just effective at some point, they see play in some deck. So, you know, you have like, out of, out of the hunter traps, almost all of them that just don't suck really see some play somewhere, right? So, yeah. Seems really good. Um, I don't know if you'd really play this in like the face hunter or like the hybrid hunter or like the more aggressive hunters. I don't know if it's good enough for that. Um, I don't know if slower hunter decks will work, but if they do, you can imagine this will be in it. Uh, this is the anti-face legendary. Uh, Bolf Ram Shield, 6 mana, 3, 9. When your hero takes damage, this minion takes damage uh, instead, which seems really broken. It's like, yeah, go face now. Um, yeah, I mean, when you look at it, it seems broken, um, but this is a very good example of cards that seem overpowered, but then when you actually play with them, you quickly realize uh, they actually kind of suck. Like They suck really bad. Um, I think this is that. Um, this guy, I guess if you buff him, if you do some stuff to him, um, you know, maybe it's actually a pretty powerful, pretty useful minion in some decks. But what I saw is uh, people played this guy, and then the opponent's minions just attacked face, and then this guy died and did zero damage. So it's kind of like um, you just gain a bunch of life. Yep. If you need life gain, and you have bolf in your as, as a card I guess you can put them in and use them as life gain um, but that's really all it is the three damage is like not really anything a um, little bit unimpressive but it's cool I like I like the cool cards uh, I think in terms of like arena and that kind of stuff you'll you like this is like really really bottom pick so I don't know I like it but don't expect to play with it too much Bone Guard Lieutenant, 2 mana, 3, 2, and the Inspire gives him 1 health. Um, this is a pretty nice little card. Um, again, it doesn't, seem, it doesn't seem that broken, so it probably won't see that much constructed play, if any. Probably none, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm still not really sure uh, what will happen if you stick like all the Inspire cards in the same deck. Um, maybe that actually makes them pretty good. And if you do that, maybe you need a 2-drop with Inspired. Maybe this is your 2-drop to go to. Um, but it's pretty good in Arena. In Arena, cards that have 3-2 uh, stats for 2 mana are good enough. And this one can get the extra health. So if you go first, play this on turn 2, your opponent plays a 2-3. Sometimes you can Hero Power and get a favorable trade. And that can be better than playing a 3-drop in some situations. So it uh, seems like a really good Arena card. Um, definitely above average. Um, so... Yeah, I'm happy for that. Buccaneer, another rogue-only pirate. Uh, I have to say, I'm not really that envious about it. Um, one mana, two, one. Whenever you equip a weapon, give it plus one attack. Huh. Well, it kind of fits the pirate theme. Uh, pirates are just really aggressive, really tempo-driven, but they're all like generally pretty easy to kill, pretty easy to remove. None of them are very sticky. Um, yeah, so that's basically why I don't see pirate decks. Uh, the other reason why I don't see pirate decks is there's not enough pirates. So maybe just more pirates makes them playable. I don't know. I have my doubts this is too good, but um, yeah, I don't know. Pirates are pretty surprising sometimes. Uh, I think you'd not be too happy getting this uh, in Arena, though. Any one health minion that doesn't do something uh, is pretty awful. Captured Jormunger, 7 mana, 5, 9, Beast. Yep, Corehound 2.0. 
Uh, it's actually a core hound. They're both beasts. You just swap the stats and you get your captured Jermunger. I have to say it's pretty good. Um, okay, obviously all the cards that don't have... <clears throat> all the cards that don't have text in the middle are not constructed good. When I say good, I mean this card is good for Arena. That's what I mean by that, okay? No text means constructed. Nope, not happening, right? So for Arena, this card's pretty good. Um, when you have uh, just big creatures, big stuff, you need to have a few of them in most Arena decks. You kind of want like a pretty good curve. So you're looking for like maybe three big dudes, something like that. And, um, you know, five attack is a little bit on the low side, but nine health is really on the high side. So um, I think a big creature in general, if it does well at killing two mid-range creatures, that's good enough. Uh, and I think this will do that. It's also really good against Mage, because um, if Mage can't kill it with a Fireball, um, well, it, it might be a little bit sticky. And uh, sticky big creatures are always very nice. Chillmaw. Oh, man. This might be my favorite card of the expansion. 7 mana, 6, 6. Dragon with Taunt and the Death Rattle is if you're holding a dragon, deal 3 damage to all minions. Um, so, I mean, this, this is kind of the dragon crap we need in the last expansion. Uh, so it's one expansion late, but uh, hey, better late than never, am I right? Um, the idea is that, well, it's a Lakian creature, so it has to be really good and has to help you not lose the game instantly. Uh, and it does that because it has taunt. And the Death Rattle is really interesting because um, when you play a dragon, when it has an effect that triggers off another dragon, your opponent can't really know if you actually are holding a dragon. Only you know that. So um, you can play this without holding a dragon if you actually just have to play it. You can play it if um, you, know, you just want something on the board. Um, or you can play it to bluff that you have a dragon. And because it's threatening, because ideally your opponent doesn't know what kind of deck you have, you might just be holding a dragon. Um, so usually if, if someone is winning, um, they're going to play the safe way. They're going to be like, I'm going to play around this. I'm going to try to play around that. This is a really hard card to play around because um, the if you're holding dragon effect is brutal in so many situations. And, you know, they might play around that um, by, like, suiciding all their small creatures rather than, like, their one big creature. And then if they do that, you might just have, like, you know, single creature removal and suddenly you caught up on the board because of the fact that this effect is so easy to bluff. So this card seems really powerful in some situations. Um, you know, obviously, if decks get really refined, if this is only in, like, one deck where you're supposed to, like, bluff with it most of the time, like, uh, you know, after, like, several months... People are playing the same stuff in Constructed all the time. There's absolutely no difference between any of the decks. Um, if you're at that stage, and the only deck where this card is really, really streamlined in has, like, three dragons, people are just going to kill it, because, you know, they're, they probably know that most of the time you'll be bluffing. So it's kind of hard to see if this will actually have a super effective fit in one deck, but um, if, if the puzzle pieces align and we get a little bit lucky... It should be really, really, really cool. All right, Competitive Spirit. This is a new type of secret. Uh, Paladin Secret, of course, one mana. And when your turn starts, give your minions plus one, plus one. Um, yeah, really cool. Uh, it was confirmed on stream that this will only trigger if you actually have minions. So your opponent can't really play around this in the fullest way if they just kill off all your minions. Um, because, you know, it just won't trigger. It'll only trigger when you have minions. So it'll almost always get some value. I say almost always because maybe you have like a Doomsayer in play and you're just kind of getting wrecked. Um, but almost always it's going to do at least plus one, plus one for one mana, which is pretty bad. But because of the expected result probably being uh, a lot higher than that, I think because Paladin, it's pretty easy to actually flood the board a little bit. Um, at the start of your turn, I don't think it's uncommon that you'll have two minions. And if you get plus one, plus one on two different minions, often that's better than plus two, plus two on one minion. So one mana plus two, plus two, it's better than that. Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty good. 
So it's, uh, it's a pretty good secret. It has a really weird trigger. Um, I think at the start of the expansion, um, people won't really know how to play around this very well, uh, along with all the other kind of Paladin secrets, because there's just so many of them with so many wild effects that it's just so hard to actually guess what's going on, if a deck is actually playing a lot of Paladin secrets. And uh, maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, but as the card stands right now, it seems really broken in like the really aggressive Paladin decks. It seems pretty good in like the mid-range Paladin decks. If you're playing like Control Paladin, um, this card probably just doesn't do enough. But um, I'm pretty sure that cards that are pretty good that cost one mana see a reasonable amount of constructed play. Uh, as far as Arena... In Arena, it's actually more likely that you start the turn with more minions than in Constructed, because often you go to like top deck mode, and in top deck mode, you're pretty likely to end, uh, I mean, to start your turn with like a few dudes in play. So, yeah, pretty good stuff. Dalaran, uh, Aspirant, um, 4 mana, 3, 5, Inspire, so when you trigger your hero power, uh, he gains uh, plus 1 spell damage. Um, hmm. I like this guy's art from like the, the trailer and stuff, but I don't know if the card is particularly good. Uh, it's kind of like a pretty good arena card, and any card that's just like pretty good in arena, um, but doesn't actually have a distinct combo function, um, is generally not going to be seen and constructed. Uh, but again, I don't know. Uh, cards with Inspire, I still am not sure if full Inspire decks will work, because you have to keep in mind, like, you can't isolate Inspire effects. You have to be like, uh, you know, if you make an Inspire deck, what's the expected creatures you can, ex you know, hope to have in play? Um, if you can hope to have, like, three Inspire minions in play at all times, you know, the Inspire effect uh, is really, really, really powerful because you're triggering all three of them at the same time. So if that's the case, and you use spell damage, maybe it'll see some play, but uh, I have my doubts. Dragonhawk Rider, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three. Inspire gives it Wind Fury this turn. Uh, that's a pretty cool little card. 3-3 uh, three, three on 3 is a little bit weak. 3-drops um, have improved drastically in the last few expansions, and most of, them are, most of them that are played are at the very least 3-4, so this might not get a very good trade. But I, I think that maybe in some decks that play a lot of defensive buffs, maybe like Paladin or something, or if you can protect it if you're playing maybe some kind of Zoo, uh, maybe this card, you know, the extra damage is worth it. Uh, it's just that you have to keep in mind that uh, even aggressive decks, and especially zoo decks, uh, on turn three, they're still fighting for board control, like, viciously. Uh, and the Wind Fury effect doesn't really help board control that much when the creature isn't really that powerful. Uh, so even if it gets Wind Fury, it's not it's probably not going to kill two different things. Um, so, and if it is, and if it's often going to, you just play, you know, Raging Wargan. And how many times do you use Raging Wargan to clear the board? Not, not many times. Uh, but it seems pretty cool in Arena. I like it. Uh, you maybe play this on turn three. Maybe they played a 2-3 and, uh, you know, get a kill on that and use your hero power, do some face damage. Maybe that's when you can start going for face in some situations. I don't know. It's a really cool card, but... It seems a little bit underpowered for it to be used. Elemental Destruction. Shaman spell, 3 mana, deal 4 to 5 damage to all minions. That includes your own, of course. So you kill all your own crap as well. This card is basically for when you're totally, totally screwed. And overload 5. So uh, basically what the card does, um, you know, if you've never played Hearthstone before, it's like... Uh, if you're totally, totally screwed, this card will probably save you, but you can't play anything else next turn, so you're probably still screwed. Um, it seems pretty good against decks that, like, really vomit all the crap on the board uh, and just have no hand, uh, but otherwise, uh, it seems a little bit poor, because if you play this, even if you kill all their stuff, uh, you probably can't do much else on the turn that you play it. Um, and then you can't really do anything next turn. So if they still have cards left, you're again going to start losing pretty badly. So yeah, maybe you can use this with Flame Shock. Maybe it has some effect there. Um, but yeah, overall it doesn't seem uh, particularly good in the general sense. 
but it is a pretty extreme card. Uh, cards that are extreme and are really good in extreme situations usually make some niche lists. Uh, so for instance, um, you know, we saw like Malagos Warlock, um, and you know, this, this card kind of fits that. In that deck you don't really play minions, uh, so you don't really care if it hits your own minions, and you don't really care about your mana too much, because um, you're really just trying to stall out until you have all your combo pieces. So yeah, I mean, it seems like it works in that deck, so maybe it would work in like some other uh, combo decks. I don't know, really cool card. I hope it does work out. Uh, in terms of Arena, you generally don't play that combo theme. You generally play the normal back and forth game. And in the normal back and forth game, I have a feeling Shaman is pretty strong already. So it's not too likely that you're losing. Um, and even if you're losing, you have to be basically in like a completely losing situation for this card to be good. I guess it's pretty good in that situation. Actually, the more I think about it, I, I think it's a pretty good card. Because when you're like actually totally screwed, it'll probably save you a decent number, decent number of times. Yeah, I like the card. The card's good. King's Elec, hunter card, beast, two mana, three two, battle cry, reveal a minion in each deck. If yours costs more, draw it. Um, pretty cool mechanic. Um, I don't really think it'll make most constructed lists because it dies very easily. Um, we're, we've moved from the uh, playing creatures that died a 2 damage game uh, for a very long time now. So I don't know if that will really make a comeback. But um, yeah, the draw mechanic is pretty nice. Uh, as a hunter, um, I think you're generally going to lose jousts. Um, so I think the chance of you drawing a card is probably, I don't know, on average maybe 1 in 3, 1 in 4. But that's still that's still all right. That's still pretty good, I guess. Um, I don't think it'll really make constructed lists. There's just way better cards out there. It's not overpowered enough. But uh, for Arena, it's a really cool card. Uh, I think it's really powerful for Arena. Um, I mean, 3-2 uh, uh, two for 2 mana that draws you draws you a card 1 in 3 times is basically a Gnomish Experimenter. And Gnomish Experimenter is, you know, it's all the right Arena card, actually. And for 1 mana less, and a beast... That's really good. Knight of the Wild. More beast synergy for Druid this time. Uh, 7 mana, 6-6. Six, six. No abilities other than cost reduction. Uh, and he reduces his casting cost by 1 each time you summon a beast. So you need a lot of beasts in your Druid deck for this to be useful. Um, we saw some play of this in the reveal stream. And the card seemed, you know, not particularly good, but not particularly bad. In a full beast druid deck. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really seem that powerful. The effect only triggers uh, when he's sitting in your hand. So it's not like Frost Giant where, you know, whatever man, turn 20, I just top deck Frost Giant. Bam! Zero mana, right? No, this guy is seven mana uh, in that situation. So pretty crappy. Um, I don't know, maybe beast druid becomes a thing. And if it's a thing, maybe there's room for like one of these guys in the deck, but I really doubt people will be playing two copies. Um, in Arena, uh, pretty bad, but I mean, minions that are just generally big have their role because you need a few of them in most Arena decks. So pretty bad, but it'll have a role, I guess. Valder Raider, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, Inspire game, plus 2, plus 2. It's uh, really close to Floating Watcher. Floating Watcher is a good card in Arena where you often don't have effects that deal damage to yourself. You can't synergize Floating Watcher. Floating Watcher is a good card, but uh, Floating Watcher is almost strictly better than this. One, because it's a demon, you can surprise your opponent with like getting him from like a Void Caller. You can also do many different things to take damage, so you can suddenly uh, buff your Floating Watcher to a crazy amount. Um, so you can't really do that with uh, Kvaldir Raider unless you have uh, abilities that allow you to use your hero power multiple times. And from what we've seen so far, it seems a little bit harder to do that than to take damage as a Warlock. So uh, because of that, and because we don't really see Floating Watch or see play, it's probably not constructed viable, but uh, it still seems like a pretty good card. Floating Watcher is a really good card in Arena. So uh, yeah, pretty good card in Arena. 
maybe see some play uh, probably in the budget inspire decks but I don't know if it's good enough for just even a full inspire deck for constructed uh, Magnetor Alpha Warrior Epic 4 mana 5 3 also damages the minion next to whomever he attacks uh, we saw this on the uh, the big ass mech legendary from GVG um, and that guy was all right he saw some play in some decks um, this is basically the opposite this guy's got like a huge attack value and low health which is usually really bad um, which basically means he's not really going to see any playing constructed ever uh, but in terms of arena he's all right if you open up with like a fiery war axe start controlling the board uh, this guy's really problematic to deal with because um, if your opponent has like a small creature or if he has like you know creatures summoned from like a hero power like totems or paladin dudes he basically has to suicide his cards into this guy for free so he can play like four drops and five drops because um, like let's say it's a shaman if he has a totem and he's facing this guy he can't even play a yeti because the yeti will die for free so i mean in some situations it might be all right um and i'm not saying it's like particularly good i'm saying there are some redeeming qualities to this obviously terrible card um so maybe it's okay for a warrior in arena uh, for Constructed, it's mostly a fun card, and, uh, well, maybe it will be a lot of fun, but uh, I don't think it'll be that effective. Murloc Knight, uh, Paladin Murloc, 3-4 four for 4, and Inspire summons a random Murloc. Uh, that seems really powerful, but uh, if you guys want to look it up, uh, I think the average Murloc is, like, less than 2 mana cost and has bad stats. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that this card is not good enough to be just in a Paladin deck. Uh, this card is pretty bad. But um, if you're playing a Murloc Paladin deck, um, just having another Murloc on the board might be really good because you have other Murlocs that buff the Murlocs already. So maybe just you know you get way more value out of having another Murloc on the board. Um, alternatively, you can get lucky and get a Murloc Knight from your Murloc Knight, so then you can summon a random Murloc while you summon a random Murloc. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool, I guess. Um, it, it'll maybe see some play and just inspire centered uh, control Paladin decks, if that is a thing. Uh, again, might see some play in Murloc centered Paladin decks, if that is a thing, but uh, not quite good enough in the normal sense. Um, in Arena, I really like the card. Um, it's a card that might be good enough to play on turn 4 because people don't always play the best stuff. It's Arena. And it's a card that the Inspire mechanic drives it to be strong enough as a late game card. So, uh, you know, it's it can maybe compete with a 6 drop in the late game. If you get like a decent Murloc, you get the dude from your hero power and this body. Or maybe you can taunt in front of it and get like 2 Murlocs. So, you know, you, you can test... A big creature but it's not a big creature and I think that makes it a pretty good arena card speaking of good arena cards again no text constructed no chance um, five mana five six it's basically the the five mana Yeti the uh, the five mana boulder fist ogre is that good yeah that's pretty good uh, five drops have been like the worst things ever for a really really long time and uh, because of that well, this is really, really good stats for 5 mana. Uh, it's going to kill almost every other 5 drop. Um, in Arena, a pretty good 5 drop is just 4 6 worth of stats. This is better than that, so this is great. Another 5 mana card, Recruiter. Hmm. 5 mana, 5 4, and the Inspire adds a 2 2 Squire to your hand. So, what is a 2 2 Squire? Well, it's a 2 2 creature, of course, but a Squire. Uh, at least the one already in the game um, is the one from the Silverhand Knight, and that one is a one mana casting cost 2 2 creature. So I believe it's going to be the exact same one. So the Inspire effect, when you trigger your hero power, you get a one mana 2 2 creature card in your hand every time. Um, which doesn't really seem that good because if you play this on five, 
Uh, he's not really worth five mana by himself. He's probably going to die. So, yeah. You need to run an Inspire deck. And if you're running an Inspire deck, it still doesn't seem that good. Because it's not really an overpowered effect. It's not the play stuff. It dies easily. So it, it, it doesn't seem like it's constructed viable. Is it arena viable? Yeah, it's okay, I guess. I don't know. Seems like a pretty interesting card, just uh, not overpowered enough. Refreshment Vendor. Uh, this is kind of the same story. Uh, four mana, three, five is not really premium stats at all. Restores four health to each hero. I guess if it restored four health to your hero, it'd be uh, way better than a horrible, horrible, horrible card called Priests of Loon. Um, so I guess they didn't want to power creep that hard with this with this kind of life gain method thing. Um, yeah. I don't know. I guess the effect is okay. Uh, even if you're playing a control deck versus an aggro deck, you're still going to make some kind of plays to push for lethal. So his health is still pretty relevant. Um, I don't know. There's probably better stuff that you can play on 4 mana. Pilot of Treader for 1. Saboteur. Uh, this is one of the coolest cards in the set so far. Um, 3 mana, 4, 3. Battle Cry. Your opponent's hero power costs 5 more next turn. So it's kind of like the Lothab effect for the hero power. Um, yeah. It's cool. Um, if people run a lot of decks with like Inspire mechanics... This guy is kind of like a techie choice against that to try to tempo them out. Um, it is the direct weakness because on one hand, uh, decks that are running a lot of Inspire cards uh, are going to have problems with tempo because the hero power is uh, a low tempo utility, let's say. Um, and if you punish that even further, um, well, you might be in a really good position. Uh, in terms of Arena... Um, again, you face a lot of heroes that have one damage hero powers, so you can play this just by itself. Three mana, four, three is good enough. And also, if you have a bunch of one health minions in play, or even just one one health minion in play, you can protect him with this battle cry. Uh, and that can give you, again, a pretty good tempo advantage. And the, anim the, you know, the, the, the image is really cool. It's like, tempo! Yeah, cool, okay. Seal of Champions. Um, three mana Paladin buff. Give a minion plus three attack and Divine Shield. Um, this card is pretty good. Uh, it combines Blessing of Might, which gives three attack, and Divine Shield, which costs one mana normally. So it combines two one mana cards into one, and it costs three mana. So tempo-wise, it's a little bit worse, but it's in one card, so you don't have to drop both the other cards. And uh, yeah... I think it's really nice. Um, generally, you have to think about Hearthstone it is often a game of tempo. Uh, generally, you want minions that have uh, good defenses, so they have like a lot of health, uh, or they're really sticky, they're hard to kill. But if you're winning by a lot, you don't need health on your minions, because if you just have a lot of min like, Think about a scenario against like a mage. If you have one 2-1 two, one creature against a mage, and that's it, it's better to have a 1-2, right? But if you have three 2-1 creatures, it's much better than having three 1-2 creatures because they're going to push for more damage and you can't deal with all of them at the same time. That's kind of how the tempo game works. So this card is a huge tempo swing because um, if you have like a piece of crap, like even like a dude, a 1-1 one, one dude in play, uh, you can maybe play this and kill off one of their minions and you still have a high attack minion in play, and maybe you can even play like another one drop or two drop in the same turn. So in that sense, you push for like a lot of tempo all at once, which means you will suddenly probably be ahead on the board, and if you are ahead on the board, um, it doesn't matter that that minion has low health. So it's a really big shift. Uh, we've already seen Paladin gain a lot of tools that kind of help its aggressive game, um, and this card just seems like another one to that toolbox. So if there's a lot of cards that kind of do that one thing and one does it pretty well, which is this card, it probably will see some play. Uh, I also think it'll be pretty good in Arena just because in Arena value is also important, as is Tempo. It's a pretty good Tempo card 
and it's a pretty good value card um, because just giving a minion divine shield is often good enough value for one card because you're going to trade the divine shield card uh, for their minion. Uh, this is better than that. You get divine shield and you upgrade your minion, so you trade up as well. Uh, it's a really, really good card, and it's common. So watch out, mage. Might be paladin time to shine in the arena. Shadow Fiend, Priest Epic, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three. whenever you draw a card, reduces its cost by 1. Um, yeah, it, this card might seem really good if you have a lot of draw combos, and if there is like a lot of draw combo stuff in Priest, maybe we'll see some play. But as a standalone card, I think it's pretty bad. Uh, I think a lot of people are excited about this, but I think they're just not really thinking about the full picture here. Um, you can't play this on turn 3 and expect good results because 3 mana, 3-3 three, three is usually not good enough. Um, you need another like real effect that happens right away. So like if, if you play this, it's going to die to their 2-drop or their 3-drop will kill it for free. Um, at that stage in the game, people are still fighting for board control. Even face decks are fighting for board control on turn 3. Uh, a decent number of the time. So you can't expect this ability to really trigger very much. Uh, and in the late game, often reducing something's cost by one isn't that big of a deal. Uh, yes, there's Emperor Tharson, but Emperor Tharson usually triggers off of more than one card. And Emperor Tharson, um, you usually play it strategically when it triggers specific combo cards. You have no idea what you're going to draw. So I don't think this card is that good. Shady Dealer. Uh, rogue card, 3 mana, 4, 3. Battlecry, if you have a pirate, gain plus 1, plus 1. Uh, card's okay for Arena. Uh, I don't think it's really constructed viable, uh, but maybe. There's a lot of like cards that kind of encourage rogues to try pirate decks, so maybe that's okay. Uh, the thing is, though, that there's not many good pirates that you play just on 2 mana. A lot of them require like a weapon or some kind of synergy or something like that. So it's pretty unlikely that you play this guy on curve and get a 5-4 out of him, which is a position where he is really, really strong. It's just going to be very rare. Most pirates just have some kind of combo mechanic. And this guy is not a pirate himself, which is really relevant. I think if it was a pirate himself, uh, I think he would be. Uh, maybe constructed viable in some kind of rogue pirate deck. Uh, but as it stands, yeah, often you lose a lot of value. You even lose some uh, future tempo for playing uh, like a pirate early on, on on two. And just to get this guy, it might not even survive. And yeah, doesn't seem like it does enough. Um, nice card, though. I wish it did, did a little bit more. Sideshow Spell Eater. 6 mana, 6-5, six, battle cry, copy your opponent's hero power. Um, that's pretty interesting. If your opponent is like Jaraxxus, uh, you can copy the summoning of Infernals, I guess. Uh, but in the general sense, you're essentially just taking your opponent's hero power. So this favors hero powers that uh, either suck or suck in the late game. So which hero powers are those? Uh, I think the rogue hero power is generally bad in the late game um, because, um, you know, in the early game you take a lot of damage to your face. And in the late game, especially when you're up against the bigger creatures, you're not usually going to attack into them with your hero power weapon. You usually require a big weapon, like an actual weapon card, to attack into bigger minions. Now, a lot of constructed rogue decks don't run weapons, they just run like weapon buffs. So obviously, if you're running those type of combo decks, you wouldn't want to include this. Actually, you probably wouldn't want to include this at all. Uh, but that's that's kind of the idea. So maybe in like Arena, this card is better for Rogue than for other classes, perhaps. Uh, also, Warlock. Um, as a Warlock, you usually tap a bunch of times, and then when you're done tapping, your hero power is completely useless. So maybe you can play this guy then. Um, so, yeah, it has like some kind of purpose, but it doesn't, doesn't feel like that purpose is constructed play. 
Sparring Partner Warrior card. Pretty good one. Uh, two mana, three, two taunt, and give a minion taunt with Battle Cry. So you can give whatever minion you want taunt. It doesn't have to be your own minion, it can be your opponent's minion. And uh, this has some value. If your opponent has like a taunt and it's protecting a creature you really want to kill, you can give the creature you really want to kill taunt and then kill the creature. Um, also, you can combo this guy with Black Knight. You can give whatever creature you want taunt with the Battle Cry and then Black Knight to kill it. Um, warriors don't really need more removal, but if people are playing taunts anyway, if Black Knight is good anyway, if you're playing this guy because maybe you're playing the new warrior card, I think it's called Bolster, that gives all your taunt minions plus two plus two. So if you're playing this anyway, if you're Black Knight anyway, uh, if you're playing Bolster, I mean, it's just, it's just all kind of synergistic. It's a whole new deck, and Warriors already have some pretty good options to play with, so I don't know if that deck will really be competitive, but uh, it's certainly one I would like to try. Spawn of Shadows, uh, four mana priest card, five, four, and inspire deals four damage to each hero. Uh, so this is kind of like promoting Shadow Priest. Um, Shadow Priest in World of Warcraft did do a lot of damage to themselves. Um, I think, I forget what the spell was called, I think it was Shadow Ward Death. Shadow Ward Death used to do a lot of damage, but if it didn't kill your target, you took like some of that damage, I think, something like that. So this is kind of with that theme, where if you're playing Shadow Priest, you kind of you know inflict some pain on yourself. Um, it doesn't seem like a good card, but four damage every time you trigger your hero power is a lot of damage. So uh, it's in line with some other extremely reckless uh, Priest cards that are also pretty bad in general, but what tends to happen is if you have a lot of cards that are just extremely reckless, um, together all in the same deck, you know, if you just completely brutalize down your opponents, maybe, maybe it's good enough. Um, so we'll see. Uh, it's certainly another one of those cards that I really, really want to try in a specific deck. Um, for Arena, it seems pretty bad. 4 mana, 5, 4 is not as good as 4 mana, uh, 4, 5. And in Arena, Priest is almost always the class that wants to control and slow the game down as much as possible. So, that does not help you do that at all. Stable Master, Hunter card, uh, 3 mana, 4, 2, Battle card, give a friendly beast immune this turn. Immune means it takes no damage and, uh, can't get, like, frozen and stuff. Yeah. Um, doesn't seem that good. 3 mana, 4, 2 is not good stats at all. Um, it kind of promotes that idea I was talking about. You know, if, if you give something immune, you can, like, maybe get a favorable trade, and then you're in a winning position, and then 4 attack is really good. It's better to be a 4, four 2 than a 2, 4. That aspect is true, but, like, there aren't really any great beasts that you play before this card. So if you play this in like the late game, uh, it might be okay, not fantastic. But if you play this on curve on turn three, what are you really buffing? That's really the question. So I mean, at best you're buffing like, uh, you know, something that came out of an animal companion that you coined the turn before. But there's no like two drop beast that people play right now. Uh, they play like Haunted Creeper. If you give Haunted Creeper immune, that might even be a bad thing because you might want the two one ones in the following turn. So it 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 doesn't it doesn't work on curve. Um, I don't think this card will see any constructed play because of that. But as more cards you know appear in Hearthstone, uh, you know maybe one day this card will be pretty good. The Mist Caller. Shaman Legendary. People went absolutely crazy when this card was uh, announced on stream. Uh, six mana, four, four, battle cry, give all minions in your hand and deck. Plus one, plus one. Uh, of course, this does not work off summon minions. Of course, this does not work off of totems, because totems are not minions. They're just summoned. Uh, they're not cards, I mean. Um, so this card, I think, is is pretty, pretty good. Uh, but I think some people really um, expect too much of this card. They're like, whoa, this card is going to break the game. Eh, not really. It's not going to do that. Um, so this card is uh, as if you play a Sword of Justice, right? So Sword of Justice, 
uh, usually is worth it on like the fourth creature that you play, maybe like the third one. Um, I mean, there's a reason people don't play Sword of Justice because it kind of sucks. Um, so it's it's better than that effect, but it's more prolonged. So it's more of an investment, right? But you have to consider that Sword of Justice works off of minions that you summon. So it works off of your hero power. It works off of secondary summon minions from cards. Uh, this card doesn't do that. So it's slower. It's it's a slower return on your investment than Sword of Justice. Um, so this guy is going to like get your return on like the fourth or fifth minions that you play, right? That's kind of a lot. That's kind of a lot of minions, man. Um, so the game, the game would have to slow down like a lot for that to see play. But if it slows down a lot, this will see play and it will be really good. Um, it's just, you know, we know the game is going to slow down uh, because all the cards kind of slow the game down that have been released in TGT. But it needs to slow down a whole lot for this card to be really good. Uh, it might be like marginally decent. Um, and that's kind of what I expect. I think it'll be like maybe good enough to see some constructed decks, but um, I don't think it'll be like crazy, crazy. It's only in the very, very, very slow uh, decks that it's it's crazy. So I just don't see that happening right away. Tournament attendee, one mana, two on taunt. Yep. Well, that doesn't do very much. I don't know. Maybe like a super hyper aggressive paladin will like this card. Twilight Guardian, uh, we got another dragon, 4 mana, 2, 6, battle cry, if you're holding a dragon, gain plus 1 attack and taunt, making this a 4 mana, 3, 6, taunt and dragon. Yeah. I mean, this is a card we needed last expansion. Last expansion, people played more aggressive decks. Um, a 2-6 would have been alright, because people are playing hyper-aggressive right now. Uh, Taunt is nice. Stops the damage in a dragon deck. But, like, if we slow down the game a lot, 3 attack is maybe not even good enough. 2 attack will certainly not be good enough. Uh, and if we slow down the game enough, Twilight Drake is just better, because you'll just have a bunch of cards in your hand. So, And you probably won't even need Taunt. Mmm, Yeah. It's an alright card. It seems the timing is pretty bad on it. Don't like it too much. Terrible in Arena. We have a Rogue card. Uh, Undercity Valiant. 2 mana, 3, 2 combo. Deals 1 damage. So not quite SI7. Uh, he'd like to be SI7 perhaps. Uh, it's pretty difficult to combo this guy out too quickly. Um, with SI7 you kind of have that turn 3 combo with either Backstab or the Coin. Uh, with this guy, it probably won't be as powerful, so I don't think it's like good enough for Constructed, but I think Arena Rogues will be happy enough. Uh, sometimes dealing one damage to something is really nice, sometimes you might have a weapon developed, and it allows you to free kill a two health creature, and as far as Arena goes, you know, that's a pretty powerful effect. Wild Walker. Um, four mana, four, four! Not good stats, but Battlecry gives a friendly beast plus 3 health. So it's kind of like a 4 mana, 4, 7 if you tally up all the stats and have a beast in play. Uh, well, that is pretty good. Uh, also, the 3 health essentially can be placed on a creature to gain a favorable trade, which gains even more value. You just basically need the beast in your deck, so you have to be playing some kind of beast druid. Uh, we've been seeing some decent beasts released so far, uh, some extra decent beasts for druid. Um, so if you're playing a full Beast Druid deck, would you play this card? I would say maybe. I think it's pretty good if you're playing a lot of Beasts in your Druid deck to play one of this card. Uh, it seems that you might not want to play two because uh, it's a card that's really bad if you don't have Beasts. Or if you just have two of this card because this card is also not a Beast. Um, I think this card would be considerably better and you could play two of them uh, if it was a Beast itself. So that's kind of the, the bummer. Um, 
I don't think it would have been much either. I think I think this guy was good enough to get the beast tag. Fencing Coach. A three mana neutral card, 2-2 two, two battle cry. The next time you use a hero power, it costs two less. So basically you get a free hero power. Um, and that's pretty sweet uh, if you're playing an Inspire deck. Uh, so if you're going to use a hero power anyway, it's basically like playing a one mana 2-2, two, two, which is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Uh, a one mana 2-2 two, two is pretty decent if you actually played it on turn one, but we're talking about a one mana 2-2 two, two played later on. So if you look at the card in that way, it's not very good. But I think there's another way that you can look at the card because the battle cry doesn't actually require you to use your hero power uh, on the turn that you play this guy. Uh, and that's, that's a pretty interesting aspect. So um, I think the way that this card is meant to be played is you play him on just on curve. Turn three, bam. Turn three, two, two is pretty bad. But, you know, if you went first and your opponent went second and played a two drop, uh, I mean, his 3-2 creature just trades with your 2-2 creature, so that's not too big of a deal. But I think the idea is that you play this guy the turn before you play a card with Inspire, because cards with Inspire have extremely powerful effects in some cases, but they're just too slow to use because you have to wait until the turn where you can cast the card and use a hero power on the same turn. So this card acts as kind of an accelerant to that. And um, because of that, because people, I think, will at least try Inspire decks, I think people will try this card. And I think I am a bit optimistic that this card might make it in some of those decks. And again, hope, hoping that those decks actually make it into the meta. Uh, in terms of Arena, I think, it's, I think it is good enough. 2-2 two, two is a good enough body, and you can tempo it with your hero power. That's fine-ish. Finish. Good enough. Convert. Two mana priest spell. Put a copy of an enemy minion in your hand. I don't really like this too much. Um, it's nice that it lets you play against kind of what you're playing against. Yeah, that might sound weird, but it's not. Like, if you're playing against a fast deck, you kind of just want to keep up all the time. So you're going to want to copy like a really sticky, annoying creature. Um, and against the control deck, you're going to copy a big minion, and then, you know, that helps you out because you have another big minion in your deck, basically. So it allows you to have a lot of customized flexibility uh, based on your matchup, and that's usually a positive thing. Uh, I just feel that it's, like, a bit too inefficient. Um, like, think about it, right? So... If you're playing against mid-range or slow decks, Faceless Manipulator is just strictly better because you put them into play like automatically. It's not strictly better because you wouldn't get the battle cry effect, but is that really relevant? Often a battle cry effect is powerful, but often it's still not worth two mana. So, yeah. Um, it's a cool card. It allows some flexibility. If priests are like really hard to kill, that flexibility might be worth it. But I feel like this card could could have cost one mana, and it would have been fun to play and actually pretty good. But at two mana, it seems balanced. But balanced is not really good enough these days. Enter the Colosseum. Whoa, epic card. Uh, six mana Paladin card. Destroy all minions except each player's highest attack minion. Um, so this description is a little bit weird uh, because... Like, what happens if if you have, like, five 1-1 one, one creatures? It, what happens in a tie, right? Like, do you keep all five 1 minions? Because they're all your highest attack minion. But I think based on the idea of the card, that's probably not what's going to happen. I think it'll just kill um, all your minions except the one at, on the highest attack. And if there are multiple minions with the same highest attack... You'll just randomly get to keep one of them. Um, so I think if that's the case, and I think that's the case, uh, the card is pretty good. It's certainly really cool. Uh, it acts as an option to like an equality consecrate combo because um, if you're really, really screwed, well, if you're up against like seven minions, you kill all but one of them. And yeah, it's going to be a big minion that's left, but 
you know, you'll still have your big minion. Um, Paladins have ways to reduce attack of big minions, so yeah, you can just enter the Colosseum and then like peace keep whatever is left if you want. Um, sometimes you might just be able to kill that. Sometimes you're just up against a lot of like mid-range minions and your biggest minion is bigger than their biggest minion. So there's a lot of favorable situations for this card. Uh, Paladins are, is certainly a class that can make it to you know the six mana late game. I guess these days it's late game. Um, so yeah, you don't even need a creature. Your opponent can just have seven creatures. You can just remove a bunch of them. It seems pretty damn good, but Paladins, again, already have really good uh, clear removal. So is it better than that? I think it's not. Um, I think Equality Consecrate is better because um, the cards are good individually, and they're really good when combined. Uh, this card is just usually good, but it's still conditionally good, and it's not as flexible of, as having two cards that can separately, uh, by themselves, uh, clear a board in a favorable situation. So I I don't think it's ideal. Um, I, I think it's like, it's kind of like Bouncing Blade, right? So like it has a really good scenario. It seems really powerful in some cases. It can do some extraordinary stuff. But in terms of consistency, in terms of flexibility, um, I think there are better options out there. Uh, but I really look forward to using this card in Arena. Frigid, Snowbolt, 4 mana, 2, 6, spell damage. Yeah, people are not going to play this in Constructed. Uh, in Arena, still probably not. Uh, maybe you'll make like a spell power, spell damage themed deck. Maybe run this. I don't know. It's a cool card. I like the little guy. Too bad. Mogor's Champion. Um, okay, there's a reason why these cards were released all at the same time. Because a lot of them are just really dumb. And you know, don't really need to exist. 6 mana, 8, 5. 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. I mean, why, why could it not be a 5, 8? And then maybe it's playable, right? But no, it's, it's an 8, 5. Some of the Ogres, they're pretty decent, but because they have really good stats for their mana cost, this guy doesn't even have that. Uh, I don't understand why it's rare. I don't understand anything about this card. This card is really, really horrible. Mulch Druid Removal uh, destroys a minion and adds a random minion to your opponent's hand. Um, this card is really sweet. Uh, I don't know if it's good enough to make normal druid lists, but I really like it uh, if a control game ensues. And you guys have seen a lot of the uh, late game minions that we've reviewed so far, at least today and in the past. They actually don't get BGH'd. Uh, Blizzard's kind of learning. It's like, yeah, we can't really make really good minions that always have 7 or 8 attack. So, you know, without BGH working too much... Uh, druids might need a way to remove big threats. This is an interesting way. You might be giving them a better minion. It's possible. It's unlikely because, um, well, if they had better minions, they're probably ones that he'd otherwise include in his deck already. But it, you know, this is going to result in some like some crazy epic highlights because sometimes you're going to give your your opponent just the perfect minion to totally destroy you. But uh, otherwise, in the expected situation, it's a pretty good card. Uh, you're often going to gain a tempo lead, and that's usually what was really missing from uh, the Druid toolbox. Also, it's a really good card uh, for Fatigue Druids and Mill Druids, because um, if you can't deal with a creature, you can destroy it with this, but you also fill their hand by one, so you can use this in combination with some other um, you know, hand-pumping tools to mill them of some cards. So, you know, it, it seems good enough to make like the Fatigue Druid list, and maybe we'll see some regular play. So, really cool card overall. Power Shot. Basically the cheapo explosive, explosive shot, three mana, deal two damage to a minion, and the minions next to it. Um, this is a card that is probably like super powerful if you get a little bit of spell damage. Uh, it's, I mean, it's super powerful by itself right now, but people will probably be playing slower decks. If people are playing slower decks, this card won't kill that much, but it's still uh, pretty damn nice. Um, I mean, you can do six damage to three different things for three mana. It's like a controlling hunter card. That's really the issue. Like, 
People haven't played Control Hunter successfully in a very, very long time, if ever. Yeah, so if people start playing that type of deck, maybe it'll have some fun. Power Word Glory, Priest buff, one mana, choose a minion whenever it attacks, restore four health to your hero. Um, that's a really cool card. Um, I say cool, I don't say particularly good. Yes, if your opponent goes face, 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 and you put this on a card that your opponent doesn't really want to kill, you will gain a crap load of life. But again, I have a feeling people will not be playing those type of decks. Um, yeah. You can put this on your opponent's minion as well to kind of pacify it a little bit, but it doesn't really seem that good. Um, if you do play this card, you cannot play Akanai Soul Priest in your deck, and I think Akanai Soul Priest is going to be a really good card uh, still, like always. So it's, it's a very, very specific type of deck that would ever use this card. So I don't know. In Arena, it might be pretty good. It might just seal out the game because priests... Like, in Arena, as a priest, when it comes to, like, turn 8 or 9, you actually are winning most of the time, but you have to recover from losing from the previous, like, 7 turns. And this card helps you do that. So, uh, it's probably better than it seems in Arena. Tiny Knight of Evil. Um, Warlock Demon, 2 mana, 3, 2. Whenever you discard a card, gain plus 1, plus 1. Uh, I guess more discard mechanics. Uh, I guess it's okay that it's a demon. Um, I don't know. Maybe we can make it work if there's a lot of discard mechanics that synergize together well enough. But um, for me, without having my hands on the cards yet, this is a deck that's really hard to understand how powerful it is. Uh, in terms of arena, it's just like good enough. Got another... Warlock Demon, Void Crusher, uh, 6 mana, 5, 4. Inspired destroys a random minion for each player. Um, this card probably looks absolutely horrible to you guys, but um, you have to keep in mind that Warlocks have, like, extremely disposable minions. Like, you know, you have, like, Implosion, 4 imps. You know, you have, like, garbage, like Haunted Creeper. You just have, you just have so much garbage as a Warlock that the Inspire effect to destroy a random minion for each player is like ridiculously powerful, especially because you have control over it. So if your opponent plays like one pretty big minion and like two small ones, all you have to do is kill the small minions and then use your hero power. You will probably lose garbage. I mean, you might lose this guy, which would suck, but you'll probably lose garbage because you're playing a Warlock and it's really easy to get minions and you specifically target your opponent's minion. So the effect is ridiculously powerful. Um, I'd say this card would be pretty broken at 5 mana. 6 mana, it seems a little bit weak. So we kind of have that issue, you know? It's like balanced at like 5.5 mana. Uh, so, yeah. It might see some play because I think it punishes slow decks. So, I don't know. It's not, it's not powerful en enough at its mana cost, in my opinion. But it's actually, if you think about it, like a tech counter to really slow decks. So maybe it's good enough in some situations, but I would guess not. Really cool arena card, but in arena it's actually harder to fill the board with garbage. Uh, it's Because you can't really bet on having the cards that do that every time. Acid Maw. Um, 7 mana, 4, 2 beast. Whenever another minion takes damage, destroy it. Well, if there's if there's ever a Shredder that spawns 7 mana cost minions, uh, th this card is going to make that Shredder absolutely horrible. <laughs> well, there's, there's Sneeds, I guess, but um, I mean, there's, there's worse legendaries than this um, if you don't consider the mana cost. Hmm. It's alright. I mean, the idea is if your opponent has a ridiculous board, uh, you can maybe deal with some of the big minions by just doing a little bit of damage to them. Uh, you can combo this with Unleash the Hounds. Uh, you know, if they have like... If they have like six Death Wings, this and Unleash the Hounds kills all six of them. I guess. Uh, it's just that the situations in which this is overpowered are so extreme 
that I don't think you're going to want to include this card because I don't think there's ever been a card that has had such shit stats for its mana cost before Acid Maw. This is basically like the new benchmark for garbage stats. So there you have it, guys. The worst stats for the highest mana cost in the game. Beneath the grounds, um, I think this this might be... I already said I had like a favorite card in, in TGT, but this is pretty close to my favorite card. Uh, Rogue spell, three mana, shuffle three ambushers into your opponent's deck. Uh, an ambusher is a four mana, five, five minion, and the death rattle returns a friendly minion um, when it dies, of course. Um, and when drawn, so when your opponent draws one of the three ambushers that you put in, in, their, in their deck, you summon a 4-4 four, four Nerubian. So the effect is kind of like an investment. The investment is absurd. Okay, this effect is nuts. Um, it's nuts because you gain a massive tempo lead. So you get a 4-4 four, four for free when they have to actually cast their 5-5. Five, five. Now it costs three mana to play the card, so on the first Nerubian, you kind of like break even, I guess, in terms of value. We have to keep in mind that there's a reason people don't play the Ambusher. They, pe people don't put Ambushers in their deck because that card sucks. Okay, So you give them crap cards in their deck. Um, that has a lot of value in itself. If they're playing like combo decks, if they're playing like slow decks, these cards are like hilariously bad. Uh, in those situations, right? So you, you you like screw up their strategy and you get a tempo lead, but it's an investment. So um, it kind of fits a rogue situation that might work. Um, it's just that like rogue is either like full tempo or we've seen in the past like some controlling rogues. So this would have to be in a deck that is like a really heavy control rogue. And then suddenly when you get a favorable situation, you do like a massive tempo push. Um, a lot of cards line up with that strategy, but we haven't seen it yet. So uh, I really hope this card, I mean, this card is insane, but just having one insane card um, doesn't really like constitute a new deck by itself. So I'm hoping that this card is enough for that type of deck to emerge uh, because it's just super hilarious, super cool idea. All right, so I, I screwed up on this card. It doesn't shuffle three ambushers into your opponent's deck, which would be so cool. Why, Blizzard, why? I don't know what the hell an ambush is. I guess an ambush is probably like, uh, like a mine. So it's probably like a card that does nothing and draws into another card. Oh man, you don't even screw up your opponent's deck. Uh, yeah, it's still pretty good, I guess. I guess you're still running the same type of deck. You're running some kind of control deck to stall it out to really get value out of this card, but... Oh man, it would have been so cool to put garbage cards in your opponent's deck. Well, maybe next expansion. Confessor... Peltris, uh, Priest Legendary, 7 mana, 5, 4, pretty horrible stats, but the Inspire summons a random Legendary minion. Um, so yeah, that's pretty powerful. Uh, some Legendaries are horrible, uh, but most are pretty good. Most Legendaries are like 5, 6 mana with pretty powerful abilities. So if you play this and use your Hero Power once to trigger the Inspire, um, the average result will be roughly um, 9 to 10 mana worth. So the card by itself is average if you trigger your hero power once. Uh, average cards are not good enough for a constructed, so you need to have a deck or a situation that allows you to trigger this effect hopefully more than once or at a discount or in the form of a combo. Um, so, I don't know. I can't really imagine that situation yet. What I can imagine is getting this off of a Sneeds as a mage with Koldara Drake and Maiden of the Lake already in play, and then casting 10 hero powers to get 10 legendaries. Happens every time. 
Then we have the other uh, Hunter Legendary. Hunters did actually get two Legendaries as opposed to all the others who only got one. But uh, Acid Maw and Dreadscale were the two Dremungers in the Northrend Beasts encounter in World of Warcraft, so they want to release both of them. Uh, fortunately for Dreadscale, um, he maybe is playable because his mana cost isn't 7 for 4-2 worth of stats. So it's a 4-2 beast. At the end of your turn, deal 1 damage to all other minions. Uh, that doesn't seem particularly good, but hey, maybe it works. If you combo Dread Skill with Acid Maw, you kill every other minion on the board, but that costs 10 mana, and minions these days have Death Rattles and Divine Shields. And resurrect effects. And if you play 10 mana and then you have 3 health worth of stats on your own board, well, you're pretty sad. Evil Heckler. 4 mana, 5 4 taunt. Uh, so this is basically Booty Bay Bodyguard uh, with 1 mana less. When you reduce the cost of a card by 1, it's a really big deal. Um, so this card is actually pretty good. Uh, and also, it's not really fair because uh, it's kind of power creep. Um, so, I mean, what's what's up with that, Ben Brode? Like, apparently, uh, we don't want to buff bad cards, but uh, we just want to release strictly better versions in expansion packs. Oh, I, I that wasn't mentioned, you know? Like, uh, I mean, I I thought. I thought if that was the plan, we would we would have heard about it, but I guess that's the plan. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's not strictly better, technically, because um, if you're playing a jousting deck and you want a 5-4 uh, taunt for whatever reason, um, if your opponents are always playing evil hecklers as their 5-4 taunt, you could be playing Booty Bee Bodyguard to also have the 5-4 taunt, but your Booty Bay Bodyguard would win a Joust against their evil hecklers every time, right? Not even close to Power Creep, am I right? Yeah. Um, so the card's, the card's pretty good. Um, the card's pretty good because uh, this is a phenomenon you often see in Arena where some decks have too many uh, low attack, high health creatures, which is usually uh, descriptive of control decks. So if people play like control -y decks and all their creatures kind of fit that theme, uh, it's actually really good to have taunt creatures with high attack. That's kind of like where some of the other high attack taunt creatures uh, really do very well. People think they all suck. They do generally suck. This card still generally sucks. But, um, you know, if a lot of people try control decks, you know, it's, uh, it's maybe like uh, a meta call. So, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good in Arena as well. Dark Bargain, uh, six mana Warlock spell, destroy two random enemy minions and discard two random cards. Uh, two random enemy minions, again, it's on your turn. You get to choose which two minions those are a lot of the time by killing the crappy minions on their board. So the effect is pretty powerful. If it was just six mana, destroy two random enemy minions, uh, I think it'd be pretty good. Uh, but you have to discard two cards, which is pretty bad, but... Maybe you're running that super crazy discard warlock, which doesn't seem powerful enough yet, but maybe if they continue adding cards with that theme, uh, maybe it will be powerful enough one day. I don't think this card will see too much play. If no, I actually don't think this card will see any play at all. But uh, maybe one day. One can hope. Pretty good in Arena. Usually if you're playing warlock, you're playing an aggressive type of warlock deck. Usually in the late game, uh, you don't have many cards or any cards at all in your hand anyway. And killing two random enemy minions uh, is an extremely powerful effect because the only way that players will beat your uh, Zooey Warlock deck is by playing big creatures. So if you kill two big creatures with this, you're going to win the game. Another Warlock card, Fearsome Doomguard. 7 mana, 6, 8. It's a demon. Yeah, I guess. Obviously, it sucks in Constructed. It does have some impact in Constructed because Bane of Doom is a card people still play. Bane of Doom is a good card. Uh, the mana cost is not relevant for Bane of Doom because it just summons a random demon. If the random demon is a 6-8, that's a pretty damn good result. Um, but um, the stats don't really make sense because Bowler Fist is a 6-mana six 6-7. Six 
So for one more mana, you get one more health and the demon tag. And so far, the demon tag has not been worth any mana crystals, as like the beast tag has. The beast tag has like a price. So it seems weird that they would introduce a card that's just so shitty. Like, why not just give him nine health? Like, what's the big deal? Is that, re is that really going to break the game? Why does he not have nine health, right? Or even ten health. If you give him ten health, maybe someone will play him in Constructed. Probably not, but maybe. But no, he has eight health, so that's pretty pathetic. Um, it's interesting to note, at least, that uh, Wilford Fizzlebang originally tried to summon a fearsome Doom Guard uh, when instead he summons Jaraxxus in the TOGC encounter. So um, this is kind of kind of interesting um, because it has a World of Warcraft connection that I think a lot of people didn't even didn't even realize. Power creep. This is actually, I think, the first instance of pure power creep. Um, Ice Rager is better than Magma Rager. Uh, why, Blizzard? Why? I wanted to play Magma Ragers. Three mana, five, two. Still horrible. Uh, still pretty bad in Arena. It's not unplayable. It's not like the worst ever, but it's still below average for Arena. Two health for a three drop is pretty bad. Uh, I guess there is some way where um, it's worse than Magma Rager. Um, I, I guess if you have a Cult Master in play and you're a mage and you're in a top deck situation with your opponent at six life and you have two cards in your deck, one card is Fireball, and the other card could either be Ice Rager or Magma Rager. If you draw Magma Rager, you can ping the Magma Rager, draw your Fireball, and lethal your opponent. And Ice Rager will fail to do that. Not even close to Power Creep. Not even close. Mysterious Challenger. Paladin, 6-mana card, 6-6, six, six, battle cry. Put one of each secret from your deck into the battlefield. Um... It's hard to say how good this will be because Paladin Secrets are notoriously shitty. But you bet your ass, I'm going to play two of these guys. I'm going to have two of every Paladin Secret in the game in my deck. And I'm going to do my best to survive, play this guy, and see what happens. Um, I expect the result to be pretty good. I expect some people will also try this plan. But I don't expect people will eventually run this type of deck. Because, um, well, this guy costs a lot of mana. People who play secrets, Paladin Secrets, are playing decks that kill your opponent quickly. This card doesn't fit with that theme. And decks in Constructed usually are themed. You want to make a deck that has one purpose. So when you have conflicting purposes, it's usually bad. So this card is probably bad. But it's, it's really cool. Um, I think it's a really good arena card. Sometimes in arena you have to have a Paladin Secret or two. And even if you don't, 6, six mana 6-6 six, six is good enough for arena. Just for Arena. Orgrimmar, uh, Aspirant, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Inspire gives your weapon plus 1 attack. Uh, well, as a warrior, you don't always have a weapon. If you play this on turn 3, this guy's probably going to die. So it doesn't really seem like it's going to work. Um, it's a common card, so warriors get a common. Um, that's It's not very good, but they get a common that doesn't suck total ass for Arena for the first time since 2013. So, yeah! We did it, Reddit! We did it! Uh, no, not really. This card's still, still pretty bad. Um, but it's an interesting one. Uh, it's a card that in some situations will be really nice. In some situations, you play like a weapon, and then your opponent plays a creature that's one out of range, and then you play this guy, you armor up, you kill the creature. All right, Polymorph Boar. Uh, this is a really exciting card. It's actually a really exciting card. Um, it's a three mana, a transform a minion into a four two boar with charge. So the reason this is really cool, uh, again, it's like top three favorite cards of the set. Um, it's really cool because um, compared to Polymorph, it's three mana, so it's more efficient. But the really interesting part is that it's still effective to Polymorph your opponent's minions. Um, like, yeah, it has two health instead of one. Uh, this card would be, this card would be, like, so completely broken if it summoned a 4-1 boar with charge. 
because it would just be almost a strictly better polymorph. Thankfully, it isn't that. Uh, it's not completely broken. It probably won't be in every mage deck, but it'll, pro it, it'll certainly be in some. Because if you're facing a control deck, um, you can go through a taunt to try to push for lethal. You can just use it as a bad polymorph if you have to against a card you can't otherwise deal with. You might lose like a 2-3, or just a 2-drop. You might lose a 2-drop. Um, or, you know, you might just do that and ping it and not play anything and take 4 damage. Um, but also, uh, you can just use it as 4 direct damage for 3 mana, uh, which is pretty good in lethal situations. So... Uh, the reason people like Fireball over Polymorph because they can use Fireball, Fireball to kill their opponent. Even though Polymorph is better as removal, you can't. You don't have the dual purpose. This card has the dual purpose. It's Polymorph, and it's kind of like Fireball because if you have like one, let's say five five creature, you can attack your opponent face, and then you can Polymorph your own creature to get a boar, and then you can attack with that again because it's a different card, and it has charge. So, yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. And then the last card. Oh, actually, no, it's not the last card. I think I have one more. Um, Wormrest Agent. Two mana, one, four. Priest card. Battle cry if you're holding a dragon. Game plus one attack and taunt. So if you're holding a dragon, this card is really insane. If you're not holding a dragon, this card is really crap. Um, because decks are probably getting slower, you can probably play dragons. But if decks are getting a lot slower, playing a 2-4 taunt isn't particularly good. Um, so yeah, in arena it's going to suck because it's hard to actually be holding a dragon. It's a nice card. It's not a bad card. I just think it will be some time until this will actually see much play. Uh, if the meta goes again into some like hyper-aggressive thing and Priest can hold it off while playing dragons, it's going to see probably a lot of play. But I don't think this will happen right away. And the actual last card, Ram Wrangler. Uh, five mana, three, three. Battle cry if you have a beast, summon a random beast. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, that effect is kind of worth it. Uh, I think the average beast is like three to four mana, but uh, some beasts are worse than others. Uh, we've introduced quite a few beasts recently, and most of them are above the previous standard. So this card is probably just going to get better and better. And also to note that, you know, some beasts are just pretty good, like Mukla's 5-5 five, five for 3, even though it's like a 3-mana beast. 5-5 is five, five not really 3-mana worth a creature. Um, it's kind of like Houndmaster, where you require a beast, then you get an effect that makes the card really powerful. But in his case, if you don't have a beast, him just by himself is really bad. So um, I'd rank it as kind of like a worse Houndmaster, which is still, in my opinion, uh, pretty good. We might see some play. Um, the expansion really tried to push like a slow, slower type of theme to every single class. So if the Hunter slower theme is controllish and it kind of works, then maybe this guy will see some play. All right, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys uh, lasted through all of it. I think it was pretty interesting. I think all the cards are obviously very interesting, very entertaining. And, uh, well, can't wait. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And see you guys tomorrow.